Hey guys, I'm Dan Swayze, and welcome to my wood shop. Today I'll be showing you how I built this awesome block set for my one-year-old nephew for Christmas. Stick around and I'll show you how I did it. To make these blocks, I ended up going on Google and I just searched for some quick do-it-yourself uh, guidelines on what kind of styles of blocks to build. I mean, yes, I could have been creative and yes, I could have figured all this out myself, but uh, I procrastinated a lot and I just wanted to do something quick and easy. So I ended up finding uh, this set of plans and uh, there's all sorts of types and shapes of blocks in here. I actually only made about half of the, the different varieties that are in this uh, set that I found. Uh, I'll link these in the description in case you wanna follow along and, and do exactly as I did and just uh, build off of a already developed set of plans for blocks. But, uh, but like I said, you, you can make any kind of blocks. Any, any chunk of wood is a, is a fun block for a kid, but, uh, but yeah, uh, let's get started. Now for this, I'm gonna start off at the chop saw here, or miter saw as some people might like to call it, and I'm just gonna roughly trim all of these boards down to a easier length. Uh, for me in my small shop, working with eight foot boards can be kind of a pain in the butt. So by trimming them all down, make it easier for me to use on the table saw. So if your shop's anything like mine, it's not very large. I don't have all of these tables set up to work off of. I end up using my table saw half the time to gather my material from the miter saw and I work back and forth tossing material around all of the time. I haven't figured that out yet. But what I have figured out is that uh, this table saw cover uh, works brilliant for a work surface. It's, it's just a large magnet actually, and it prevents my table saw from rusting uh, through the night when uh, the cooler temperatures come through. My shop's not heated, so it, it, this thing will just rust overnight. It's kind of ridiculous actually, but this prevents it. Uh, so let's get started. I'm gonna move all this material out of the way and, and set up the table saw. So now the, the first operation that I'm going to want to do here is I, I just want to take a, a clean cut on each side and just uh, eliminate any of these mill marks or, or leftover uh, damages on these 2x4s. I mean these are just standard 2x4s. Uh, for what we're making they're going to work great. For children's toys these are going to get beat up relatively fast. But uh, I'm just going to clean these up and then uh, put a, a perfect rolled edge on them later. So if we raise our blade to just above our workpiece, we can then make several cuts and trim all of these edges off. do next is uh, we're going to rip all of these two by fours down into one and a half by one and a half inch uh, squares so that way it would be easy for my one-year-old nephew to pick up these blocks maybe when he's older I can make him some larger versions of these blocks out of just two by fours but for now because he's a, a small infant a toddler if you will uh, I think the smaller blocks would be a little bit easier for him to play with but uh, anyways, we'll turn on the dust collection.
Now that we got all of our material cut to width and rough shape, we can chop it all on the miter saw here. And we're going to do what every woodworker is good at, making sawdust and lots of square blocks. Okay, so now that we have all of our rough shapes, let's go over to the drill press and turn some of these into little arches. Hey guys, so what we got going on here is I've got some of these blocks that I wanna turn into half arches, and uh, I set up a carpenter square to act as a stop block in each direction. So that way all I have to do is take my block, slide it into my stop, clamp it down, and then I can just drill my hole. Uh, what I'll be doing is I'll be drilling halfway through and then I'll be flipping it over and then drill the rest of the way through so I don't get any blowout on the backside. But uh, yeah, let's begin. Now that all of our arches are complete, we'll head back to the table saw and we'll talk about uh, a couple other different shapes of blocks that we're going to make. Hey, so over here at the table saw, uh, what I was going to try to do is use my, my taper jig to try and cut these uh, at an angle to make uh, wedges or, or door stops, if you will. Uh, my taper sled, it doesn't have enough, enough play to get the correct angle that I wanted. Um, and it's, it's gonna end up being an unsafe cut on the table saw here. So I'm not gonna make those. Uh, if you've got a, a cool way to make those on the table saw, uh, drop a comment below. I, I'm curious to see what you guys come up with. Um, if I had a bandsaw, you could make them on a bandsaw with a, with a little jig, but uh, on a table saw, I'm not coming up with anything at the moment. Uh, I'll probably come back to that at a later date. For now, I'm gonna take all the blocks that I made and I'm going to sand them down and probably coat them with uh, uh, a food grade uh, mineral oil and wax that you'd use on a butcher block. For rounding over these corners, like I previously said, uh, 240 grit seems to be the uh, the grit of choice. I tried 150 and, and 120 and those just seem to be a little bit too coarse. But uh, I've just got a, a crude dust collector set up and I got my shop vac and uh, yeah let's get uh, let's get sanded. <laughs> This is uh, this is all I'm trying to do here. Just trying to round over these edges a little bit and just uh, just make them nicer than they were. So if you don't have a, a belt sander like, like I do, you can take a DA sander and you can mount it to a, a workbench or a table saw, or you can put it in a, a vise, and you can just use an upside down DA sander to round over all of these edges. Um, if you don't have a DA sander, you could always resort to hand sanding. It'll just take you a little bit more time. But uh, but yeah, let's get uh, let's get started with using the DA sander instead of the uh, the belt sander. And just like that, you, you take your black and uh, you just round over all the corners and just make it uh, smooth to the touch. Um, also, uh, working on a DA sander upside down like this uh, gives you a lot more control than trying to use the belt sander. Uh, the belt sander wants to just take the object, rip it out of your hands, and throw it across the room. So, 
you know, you just get a, a lot more stable sanding if you use an upside down DA sander. But, uh, but yeah, it works out great. You get nice smooth blocks and uh, we could take these and, and finish them. So to wrap things up here, I actually forgot to film the finishing process, but all I did was I took all of these blocks and I sanded them down to uh, 240 just to make them smooth to the touch. And then I just used this uh, Howard's Booker Butcher block conditioner. Uh, it's made with uh, food grade mineral oil and waxes. So it's completely safe um, in case little kids put these in their mouths, which is definitely going to happen. So use something that's safe, use something that's rated for direct food contact. If it's rated for food contact, it's going to be okay if a kid puts it in his mouth. But, uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, if you liked this video, go ahead and give it a, a thumbs up and then please subscribe. Uh, it helps me uh, be inspired to get back out here and to make more projects. Uh, I really enjoy doing this and any support that you guys can give me is greatly appreciated. Thank you.